Nowadays with the advent and popularity of smartphones and streaming services, nobody's really listening to CDs anymore. Everything that you need to know is at your fingertips, including the metadata, artist, album, song info, and even album art to correspond with the song you're listening to. But back in the 90s and early 2000s when CDs were all the rage, people needed an easy way to label what it was that they were burning to disc. So if you're a Luddite like me that refuses to get with the times and just use your phone to play back media and you still burn content to CDs or DVDs, you need some way to label it, just like people in the 90s and 2000s were doing. Enter the Avery CD Stomper Pro CD Labeling Starter Kit. And what's nice about this kit is you don't just get the peel and stick labels that you could run through your regular inkjet printer. It actually gives you the applicator for said labels. That makes it a lot easier to actually center the labels on the discs and adhere them properly as opposed to trying to do it freehand. If you'll picture for a moment, here's your uh, new CD or DVD hot off the presses. Here's your uh, label, if you could just imagine that this is sticky right now and uh, very thin paper. Trying to center this up is not exactly the easiest thing to do in the world. It looks a lot easier with this blank uh, spacer disc, but believe me, it isn't. Claims that this is the easiest and most complete design studio for creating and applying professional quality CD-R media or DVDs, labels and CDs or DVD packaging. Of course, nobody was really burning DVDs when this was new on the market, so that's why it's primarily focusing on CDs. The CD Stomper system simplifies label and jewel case insert designs. You don't need to be a graphic artist or own expensive software to make fabulous looking labels. Just print your labels and design with any inkjet or laser printer. Includes die cut labels and uses a disc friendly safe adhesive designed to ensure easy goof free printing. And then there's that applicator which makes short work of centering your labels correctly on the discs. Compatible with Microsoft Windows 2000, 98, 95, 3.1, and NT. And it says over here, this really dates it, personal computer with 486 or higher processor, 16 megabytes of RAM, CD-ROM drive, VGA or higher resolution monitor, 6 megabyte for PC and 16 megabytes for Mac of disk storage available at all times. And there it is, unboxed for our viewing pleasure. Got the CD Stomper applicator over there and a folio filled with the software CD-ROM and the peel and stick labels as well as a couple other things, I think instructions and pamphlets related to the software. Have the uh, Click and Design 3D CD DVD label design software PC Mac version 5.1 there's a really old version of the software and then this was the insert that used to be sitting right on top of the stomper device and here is a label setup uh, guide and it's telling us that we need to use the Pro CD Labels 2 dash up in the stomper software and a couple of different products that were available at the time. Stomper refills, glossy label refills, jewel case inserts. And there's the date right there, 2001. Also have a quick start guide, which is more than what you usually get with any kind of software these days. Actually guide you through some of the uh, basic procedures for creating, editing, and printing labels. Yeah, this is peak early 2000s graphic design here. Also have a did you know tips and tricks section. Did you know you can fix the background image? Did you know that it supports drag and drop? And a bunch of other tips and tricks that I never knew about. Probably still won't know about because I'm not gonna read this whole thing. And this nondescript white thing that looks just like a pile of folded up eight and a half by eleven copier paper or the labels themselves hopefully they're still good all these years later and the adhesive hasn't failed on them have the uh, CD labels here and then these little squares which they're saying are for floppies zip disks and things like that but the stomper 
and labels aren't too terribly useful without the software. Enter my Dell Latitude E6500 and with this video being recorded in HD I can't hide behind the lower quality footage masking very dusty computers and so for this purpose I'm just going to utilize the finest in dust removal technology and that is my sleeve. Well here goes nothing. I probably shouldn't phrase it that way because I did cheat a little off camera and actually installed the software confirmed that it does work at least under Windows 7 and yes I know my Microsoft Security Essentials security definitions virus definitions are a little out of date and this battery is almost about to go dead so no need to remind me of that in the comments and also yes quite well aware that a screen recording software would probably do a better job than pointing the camera at the screen however some testing using OBS and other screen recording software really didn't go too well and the microphone on this laptop is not that great so I think we'll just stick with the tried and true pointing the camera at the screen method at least then you can see my grubby mitts pointing at the screen. Can't do that with screen recording software. So yeah, this is a very early 2000s piece of software. This uh, blue gradient background brings back a lot of memories of installing old computer software from this time. And pretty sure this software is actually created by what is now known as Avery. Because I think the CD Stomper name is now owned by them. I'm not going to go through this whole process of installing it because I already have. I just wanted to take a quick trip down memory lane back when all software used to come with uh, executable installers that look like this. And remember when software actually tried to be helpful? Actually gives us a little tool tip of the day. Pops up every time you open the program. Gives you a bunch of different tips on how to use the software to its fullest. And if we want some more tips import an image directly from a scanner using the tools scanner digital camera menu and here's where it's important and why it was mentioned in that piece of paper about using the pro CD labels 2 dash up which is this one right here and then you can either start with a blank template or use the quick designer and the quick designer definitely makes things a bit easier to navigate for the novice such as myself that has never really gotten into uh, making CD or DVD labels even when this was at uh, the peak of what people were doing with their multimedia collections. You could change the layout here as a couple of different presets or uh, themes that you could go through for photos. Uh, some business oriented ones that just uh, look incredibly dated these days but I'm not at all saying that facetiously. I'd actually rather have labels that look like this than uh, the stuff that you could do these days. I don't know, this seems to have more character, but that's just like my opinion. And everybody has one. Quite a few different uh, ones, actually. I like the one that I thought it said modem, but it's actually modern. Overlapping rectangles, pastel, rainbow. That's actually a pretty nice uh, one that looks like something you'd see on a lot of new synthwave music track. I think we'll go with this contrast theme since it's primarily black and white. My printer really doesn't like printing out color images with any modicum of quality. And then we could turn on or off these additional wizard features that show up down here. And you could also alter the theme to be aqua, blues, green, purple, red, and then you could change the fonts between a number of different ones and if you click in here it'll actually bring a drop down up and then a position scheme do a vertical invert wacky and then you click over here to where it says update text that's where you could fill in everything all right for this next step before I get to actually labeling the CD I'm gonna do something that most everybody has probably done and that's burning a mixtape to a CD so what I have now is CD burner XP opened up. Um, fortunately it's no longer in development but uh, this is a pretty capable program when it comes to burning CDs and one that I like quite a bit because it allows you to very easily create a compilation CD and also create a track listing and of course these files don't have the correct metadata so that's why there's a bunch of blanks over here but you can also create a cover that's built in to the program and customize a couple of different things 
create a little jewel case booklet insert but that's not what I'm interested in doing right now I am going to burn a regular CD I've gotten pretty good at estimating how many CDs I could fit let's try that again I've gotten pretty good at estimating how many songs I could fit on a standard CD I have room for a few more but that's enough for now enable CD text and a pause for two seconds is adequate and there we go and now while this is burning I can go back over to the laptop and complete my label and here is the end result and what I ended up doing because there wasn't enough room to accommodate all the song titles is I just went in and instead of keeping each song title on its own separate line I just used the backslash to separate the songs and it's a bit limiting that you can't have a title pretty much more than that many characters otherwise it just gets cut off but there are a couple of templates with give you, which give you a bit more room to work with as far as longer titles are concerned but that's good enough I like the way that looks actually so I'm gonna click finish there we go I suppose we should probably take a quick stroll through this programs user interface There's a couple of different zoom adjustments here one to zoom to the actual label you can also turn a grid on which will also enable it to snap so if I want to adjust this and uh, have it snap to a grid I can do that by just pressing that button and then I could also turn on a ruler either for it to follow the page or the label itself just to help with uh, getting everything uh, aligned properly and I could turn clipping on and off for that which extends past the actual circle of the label cut copy paste uh, grab to move stuff around I can insert a picture if I really wanted to it's actually quite a bit of clip art that comes with the program by default and when you go to insert a picture it actually defaults to the click and design 3d directory and there's quite a selection of different clip art and images we'll go to office supplies for whatever reason it's not showing thumbnails you have to click this button by default after you click this button up here it does begin to show you some thumbnails and <laughs> there's lots of uh, like office XP and office 2003 era uh, clip art photos on here this is a real blast from the past here all different clip art of people you could do uh, landscape clip art kids and toys I think we're gonna go with the uh, saxophone clip art right here what just happened did it really just crash alright the program crashed on me thankfully I was able to rebuild what I lost because I didn't save it but I did remember how everything looked and now I've reloaded it <laughs> you just get a load at all of these 90s early 2000s images and graphics there's a rather large collection and I'm having a hard time picking one in particular but I think what I'm gonna go with is this one with the pillars and I'll click that hopefully it doesn't crash this time and I'm gonna resize that and you know what I'll do? I'll make that even smaller. And I'll put that... I'll leave it right there. I think that's good. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll turn the grid on. And we will align that. I like the way that looks right there. There's a couple of other things that you could do, like drawing text, elliptical text, 3D text and shapes, which is... Oh, it looks just like uh, the word art that you used to be able to do in uh, Microsoft Word of uh, yesteryear. Can even uh, paint on our image. I guess you gotta select an area, and then I don't know what this is supposed to do. Let's just click OK. All right, so I guess it modifies it as like an image that you could then write over. If I wanted to, I could even add a barcode with my channel name on it. So I'm gonna press Save before this thing crashes and I lose all this work again. All right, I guess there's nothing more to do at this point aside from getting a label loaded in the printer. And according to these instructions, I guess they want you to load this in this orientation in the printer. So 
upside down. Well, it's not archival quality, but it'll certainly have to do, and that's actually going for that uh, keeping in line with that retro look that I'm striving to achieve. So now I've got my label, my CD that's just been burned for my desktop, and the stomper. So now what I'll do is I'll take the label, peel that off of the uh, piece of paper, and pull this thing up, place that face down, and this is the, where the magic happens. I take the disc, put it face down, and then this is not provided with the kit, but uh, is highly recommended so you don't scratch the disc. It's just one of those filler blanks that come in a pack of new CDs. You put that on top, you push it down, and you now have a professionally labeled CD. And so now to finish off our custom labeled CD, just use one of these uh, paper envelopes. And there we are, living as if it was still 2001, complete with CDs, with custom labels, complete with Circa Y2K clip art. So if you're somebody who has messy handwriting or just wants a polished look, instead of using a Sharpie, maybe pick up one of these CD stomper kits and end up with a final product that looks like this.